You know, there's some elements of religious dogma within the scientific community as well. You know, they're like the way that they they are so um, adamant about not like the, the, the oh, part of this whole conversation. And this wasn't really addressed too much in the movie, but it's the whole consciousness aspect of it, which kind of it, the whole physics about how these craft would work. And they've released they, they spoke about some theories about how it, there's a bubble surrounding them, which manipulates space time. And this is how they can travel and things like that. But it flies in the face of all of the physics that we have. And I've, I haven't heard Neil deGrasse Tyson comment about this film or like anything really related to all the information and testimony that's been coming out for the last few years now. Mm -hmm. So like there's a disconnect there as well, isn't there? Yeah, um, the mainstream scientific influencer community, as well as, um, you know, just scientific academic community kind of uh, shuns the UFO phenomenon. And, uh, you know, I think if it was addressed, again, this is a useful thing if Congress addresses this and unveils that it is a very real phenomenon then maybe the academia and scientific community can be a part of it and actually embrace it because right now it's not considered real. You know what I mean? You need to have sort of one before the other. Um, but yeah, I have notes here from watching like chat about these craft possibly it was Hal put off being one of them and Eric Davis and, and they're the scientists, hardcore sort of physicists in the film. Um, they talk about a time bubble, anti-gravity wave riding sort of technology that they must be using and they're warping time and space. And that's why when we have FLIR video, they talk about two things that I liked there. If you take a video of the sky and something like there is operating, like that is operating like a UFO using this time space warp bubble, you wouldn't see it with your naked eye because it's literally warping space around it so that it, it's as if it's not there. But FLIR video, all this uh, forward looking infrared camera technology that's on the F-18 fighter jets, the Raptors and stuff that Ryan Graves and the other pilots talk about chasing and detecting this stuff, that sees into a light spectrum and it's able to see something that's even got that bubble around it. That might be why sometimes these things look like a sphere, but then when they pop out of that, there's actually a black triangle or, you know, a oblong pill shaped craft, you know, or a disc, a saucer. So I liked how they address that. And it's something I've been like sort of addressing in previous docs and stuff before. I think Hal Putoff and Eric Davis were my two favorite people in the film because they seem like the ones, they seem like two guys who just know a lot of stuff and they seem a little bit less shy to talk about it than some of the other people. Like uh, Eric Davis particularly has talked about the different types of beings that he knows have been recovered from these crashes. Two, he, two distinct species. Yeah. In the film, he mentioned two distinct species. I think he re referenced more during uh, one of the, the um, conference. conferences in, in Washington, which that was, was the one where Lou held up the irrigation circle photo. Yeah. I think he was talking about mantis beings and other like so, it, it was like what, what, just that type of information is when you hear it from somebody like like him, who is an esteemed physicist, like isn't that enough to make you really stop and think, wow, like how can you deny something like that? Yeah. And I think what's interesting about Eric Davis is that he's a physicist that's been working within that UAP identification program setting. So he's actually a whistleblower and a scientist that was being exposed to this, you know, otherworldly physics and apparently saw uh pictures or maybe even film i mean that's the thing about the uap task force if you listen to david grush recently he went um on fox news and everybody was talking about that interview 
when Jay Stratton set that up in 2020 and David Grush and all these other people were part of that task force chasing up evidence and trying to get information out of insiders that were apparently part of special access programs to do with this phenomenon, crash retrievals or legacy programs where um, they had data and bodies and video and pictures from the decades before interacting with UAP and, and the non-human intelligence reality. Um, they essentially say that they saw the data firsthand. They might not have seen the craft up close themselves because that's going to be held in a very secure setting that maybe only the people that work on special access programs that they were interviewing got access to, but they saw pictures and videos or film, right. Um, of non-human intelligence. And I think that's where people like Eric Davis would have seen, okay, that looks non-human, right. And, uh, he talks about when he talks about two distinct species in the documentary, he talks about one that was observed coming off of the Roswell craft, which was four bodies, probably dead. Maybe it's rumored, maybe one was alive still. And that looked like a short sort of, people didn't even call those, those beings didn't even look like grays. They had big heads and bigger shaped eyes, but they didn't have like the blacked out eyes. There's a lot of sort of rumor and misinformation about that. Um, but that's one distinct species. And then the other species he discussed was, uh, some, something that made contact with the legacy, uh, retrieval program. So that was a interaction where they possibly landed, walked up and were like, Hey, what's going on? You know? And he didn't talk about what the phenotype was there, what they looked like. He just said two distinct species. In the conference, he talked about the mantis sort of uh, looking being, and he didn't say reptilian. People kind of from the super conspiracy world, like the love and light uh, peeps, picked that up and ran with it. He said there is something that looks like a gray that seemed to have a reptilian look to it, but was not reptilian. You know what I mean? Um, and then there was like, I think discussion of like a human looking like Nordic sort of being like me, 